Hi, my name is Elliot Pearson, and today I would like to discuss the digital divide. What's the digital divide, you may ask? The digital divide is a gap between groups of individuals when it comes to the ability to access technology. <laughs> Price of computers have went down over time, but the gap between the access of technology has grown over the same period. It's mind-boggling that this is happening. Most people can't understand why there's a gap. This video, the purpose, is to help you understand why there's a gap and what we can do to close it. So that's the definition of what we call the digital divide and that's normally very common from country to country. I live in America, United States of America, and we have a definition of you know the digital divide within our country where you have that access issue of you know, the have and the have nots when it comes to accessing um, technology and the ability to plug into the internet. Now, there is a global digital divide as well, and I wanted to bring a lot of light to that because many people don't know that. The digital, the global digital divide is a special case of the digital divide that focuses on the fact that the internet has developed in unevenly throughout the world, where if you look at the United States, countries in Europe, they have very well-developed uh, internet pipes in other countries, not so much. Now, let's talk about some facts about the digital divide. Older people are well represented globally, including the elderly. Many people don't know that. Less than 10% of discarded computers are currently recycled. That's 90% that are going into landfills and who knows where, maybe in the ocean. In America, the access is reasonable, but in Africa and Asia, access is very low. One in 250 Africans have access to the internet, compared to one in two Americans. Four out of a thousand people in Asia own a personal computer. The United States and Canada have more internet users than Asia, Africa, and Latin America combined. Governments don't know how to deal with the divide. Previous attempts were to throw money at the problem. That solution doesn't work. Many politicians and local officials struggle with framing a solution to this problem. In the US, there's a wide variety of thought on who's responsible for bridging the digital divide. You can look at this in terms of access and skill. So by looking at people's perspective on how we should bridge the gap, two groups stood out, out of the individual, the federal government, the local government, local schools, churches, colleges. Most people believe that the individual and federal government should be responsible for bridging the gap. In terms of access, 26.9% believe that individuals are responsible for bridging the gap. 27.3% believe that the federal government should be responsible. So that's more than 50% just for those two groups. When it comes to skill, people being able to develop their skill to solve the gap, 31.8% believe that the individual is responsible for this. And 21.6% believe that the federal government is responsible for this. Those numbers are very high both in terms of access and skill, most people believe that it's up to the, re the individual and the federal government to solve the gap. Those are some facts about the digital divide. I want to talk about some myths and misconceptions about the divide. Many people believe that the digital divide is over, very similar to the Exxon Valdez People say, oh, it's cleaned up. It's not a problem anymore. Look at how many people are walking around with cell phones. That's not the case. The digital divide is still very relevant in our country, the United States, and throughout the world. 
Another misconception is that the digital divide is not in my neighborhood. It's a line of thinking that everybody has a laptop just like me. That's not the case. The digital divide is just old people that aren't using the internet. That's not true either. So now that we talked about the facts and the myths, what are some things that we really can do to close the gap? The best thing that you can do individually to close the gap is when you buy a new computer, donate your old one. Find a charity. There's tons of charities in the area that will allow you to donate it and you can even get a tax write-off for it. So, you know, if you do your taxes, great. Remember to include it. They'll give you a little slip when you turn it in. Or you hand it off to your accountant. Either way, it's a win for closing the gap. Another thing to do is reduce the cost of Internet access. If we have cheap Internet access, that makes the Internet more accessible for a lot of people. Another thing we can do to close the gap is improve digital literacy. People that know how to use a computer are more likely to purchase one than people that don't know how to use a computer. Yeah, that seems like pretty much common sense, right? We should remove financial barriers. Cable modems and DSL routers require a deposit to gain internet access. You need some form of a credit card or some form of a bank account to get access. And that is a huge barrier for a lot of people of getting connected to the internet. Another thing we can do is expand internet access in schools. We make the internet available for the whole family. I think that's a great concept and that would allow us to have pretty much anyone in the family having access to the internet. And when that happens, you don't have a Today we learned what the digital divide is and some things we can do to close the gap. We understand now that throughout various countries there's different levels of a, of a gap. We also know that there's very real tangible ways that you can help close the gap. You're probably watching this on a computer right now. Statistics says that you are. <laughs> Also, the stats on my YouTube page say that I get a lot of people that are still looking at videos through, de through the desktop, which is fine. I know you're going to move on to a bigger and better computer in the future or tablet. I only ask that you donate your computer or tablet to a local charity or school because those environments are in real need. Please work with your politicians to reduce the cost of the Internet. Please work with your local charities and organizations to improve digital literacy in your area. This is the best way for us to close the gap. So I really want to thank you for watching. This video was filmed by me, <laughs> Elliot Pearson, uh, edited by me. I also came up with a script as well. The music that you are hearing now is by Livo. This project was an assignment for a course I'm currently taking. So I did a lot of scholarly research that I'm including on the next few slides if you want to go through.